Does it matter right? Anyone else have trouble really working with those older prints from say the 70s, 80s or even 90s? The prints are usually 3x5 with those rounded corners, but many have bad colouring and bad photo composition. Has anyone scrapped these older photos and liked the outcome? Glitter Girl, can you help Does It Matter find something right for a vintage photo or two? Of course I can. This week I think we'll start by taking a look at something that I call my early years album. I actually have two volumes and this is the first one. So these are the oldest photos in my scrapbooking and then um, it cuts off at about the end of junior high and into high school. There are a couple of older family photos to so my grandparents with my mother and um, my mom and my aunt when they were little girls but then it jumps into my photos and um, so my mom and I my first birthday and things like that so we're definitely into photos that are 70s 80s and 90s like you mentioned. So um, there are quite a few different things to keep in mind um, some of them will be black and white, but a lot of them will be what I tend to call 80s color. This is actually 70s color, but that's okay. Um, so the kind of warm tones that you get in Polaroids, and Polaroids often, if they were taken indoors, tend to have some area that's very light, but then a lot of darkness around the edge where if there was a flash, it would be very central. And um, it just it, you tend to get uneven light in the older Polaroids. We also see a lot of the photos that have rounded corners and even photos that aren't on Polaroid and were taken outdoors will still have that warm tone to them. And keep in mind this is a, an ongoing album so I do have uh, things like empty pages and things like that. It really doesn't bother me. I tend to have that in all of my albums as I'm working on them. Some Polaroids, uh, if they were taken quite far away you'll end up with a lot of empty space and it's tricky to figure out how you can kind of zoom in on that because in a digital photo we might crop this and then make that part bigger but you can't do that with a Polaroid. And then some photos can be scanned or the negatives can be scanned. In this case this is a scan of a negative that then produces a relatively color clean um, digital photo. So in some cases you'll find that the color isn't too dramatically off. This is a little bit warmer than what we would have now perhaps but not hugely. It's, it's not an overly yellow photo or a very orange photo. Some Polaroids taken indoors will come out very dark I don't think that's a reason to keep them out of your album. It's just um, if it's a memory and you can still see what's there, by all means, put them in. I have lots of imperfect photos. It does, to me, imperfect even sounds a little bit harsh. I, I still like them. And you'll see this effect in some older photos where you would get the frame from the viewfinder. And one thing that, that does happen here is this was a scan from a negative, but it lost the frame at the bottom. It only kept the frame on three sides, so it's not in the printing, that was actually in the scan. The scan of the negative only um, only took three sides uh, for some reason. I don't have a ne negative scanner and had them, uh, but someone had them scanned in the family. And this looks a bit more like uh, photos that you might see from taken from a 35 millimeter camera, but in that in the 80s so very warm and you'll you'll notice that housing had a more warm tone then there were a lot fewer white crisp walls then much uh, more fashionable to have a lot of wood on the wall and a lot of warm things but here you can see in this Christmas Polaroid obviously that's Santa Claus so this should be white and it's most definitely cream and going yellow a little bit these are from uh, probably a, an early point-and-shoot and again, this smaller size, these are all originals. So th this is a um, three and a half by five. So a lot of smaller photos. Some things here that were scanned in and then uh, digitally made black and white just to try something. And those are originals. This is a very old page that I've lost the other, the other page of a double page spread. <gasps> I know that's a little bit shocking, but I found this one when I was going through old pages and thought, well, I'll put it in here, and if the other side ever turns up, then I can do something. 
this was what I wanted to point out because someone else asked this question and I don't really have, um, I'm not going to do a whole Glitter Girl on this. Glitter Girl isn't going to have a whole adventure on this, but I think we can cover this. Okay, so this isn't a layout that I made in the early 2000s and these are all original prints. And I wasn't scared of, of how I did this or anything. I, I didn't have a digital way to make a backup then. So um, I just scrapped the originals, didn't worry about it at all. And I'm not unhappy with the layout. It's an older layout, it's a different style, but I think that it's still, it's okay. I don't mind it in my album. There's a little bit that you can see is still similar to things that I would do. So I'm, I'm quite happy with this album, but I realized there was another story I wanted to tell from these photos. Something that was different than the kind of just the facts type journaling that I'd added here. And I didn't want to take the layout apart because I was quite happy with the layout. So if you have photos that are on older layouts where you want to scrapbook them again with more detail or something else, my advice is to take the layouts out of the page protectors, set your camera up so you can get a square shot over the, the layout, and photograph the layout. Photograph it as close as possible while you can still get a really crisp focus and import that into your photo library then go in and crop down to what you can so for example these I couldn't keep the whole rectangle because I'd added the stitches to make the photo corners so I cropped in closer to keep the stitches out so what I ended up with is this layout and these photos aren't as high quality. I did edit them a little bit with some brushes. I printed this one on a transparency. Um, I pumped up the saturation a little bit to make them look quite different to the originals. So this is quite a bit more harsh than this original here. But it gave me another set of prints to work with. So if you have a set that you're not happy with the layout or you want to work on something that has a different story, you just want to add more, take a photograph, add it to your digital library, and then work with the photos from there. So I just cropped in closer, I added some brushes, printed it in a different way, and then I had the, the variety of the images, even though I didn't have an original digital copy or a negative. Now what I wanted to start looking at was things that I've done with older photos to make them work. And one of the things that I tend to do is to look at older photos that have that warmer cast and put them with cream based colors in the pattern paper. So um, for example, let's see, this one actually has quite a lot of white to it, but the images were quite crisp and still had white. They're not overly yellow, they're not yellow much at all. And this one is a warmer image that is less crisp in the white. So all of the patterns here are not white based, they're cream based. So it's just a slightly more antiqued look. I do find that even with white based layouts, with older photos, the brown edging comes in even more. Um, I just tend to think that it makes everything look finished. And it also keeps the papers from looking so stark against the older photos. To have a look at the different options for kinds of papers that work well with slightly older photos, photos from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, I pulled out the new Pebbles collection called Country Picnic, which has a pink and green color scheme, but I wanted to divide it into the three ways that these papers are designed. So some of the papers are based on a white background, so they have things like a pink and a green and sometimes a little bit of a peach color on the white background, but it's very much a crisp white that's a base to the design. So that's one group within the collection. There's another group that's all on craft paper. So pink inks and some white inks as well, and a little bit of green. So polka dots and doilies and chevrons and some other dots. And these are all double-sided as well. So on the back, the, this one is um, white doilies on craft. It's very subtle. Up close is really pretty, but you have to look at it in the right light or you don't see it at all. Um, flowers, a lovely kind of just um, slightly darker shade of tan with a grid paper and then a white floral on craft. So those are actually printed on craft cardstock, so obviously a very different look to the white. 
then there are some designs that don't have either visible because the entire sheet is printed in color. So there's the green and green polka dot, there's this two shades of pale pink, again with the pale pink here and a hot pink, and this one is two shades of hot pink on the back. This one is more white based on the back with the stripe. These two sheets are embossed, so they do have a solid color on the back, but not a print because of the embossed design. But this, is, this shows us three different ways we can look at the papers in this collection. So I've pulled out some lovely early, well, one set from the 80s and one set from the early 90s, um, sets of photos. So I have these from the 80s. I can take these photos and put them against the three different kinds of papers and create a very different look. So if I put them against the white-based papers, there's something very harsh going on here. It takes the softness away from these colors. The blues and the, and the tans in the background and even the grays, they're less rigid and detailed than we would see in a print that we would take today. The photos are not so sharp like our digital pictures. They're just ever so slightly soft and they're not out of focus. They're just, the tones are softer. There's not that extreme contrast that we get in the technology that we have today. So on the white, it now looks like this float in the parade, which is white, it now looks a bit yellow and it draws out the fact that these photos have different coloring and the contrast is just quite jarring against the white print. So in my mind, I don't think this is a good set for the white based papers. If I pull out the craft based papers as an alternative, pretty quickly I can see how everything is still very soft and I like this look a lot better and um, partially because there is this this tone in the background of the bricks in that building that match with the the craft but that's really not what I'm going for if I just look at the blue with the craft I think this is a lovely combination here where it's um, the, the the soft tone against the craft background is just very pleasing rather than the starkness of the white. And now on these, I don't feel like the white in the float is being competed against and it doesn't look, it doesn't look yellowed now, it's, it reads as white. So to me, the pictures look truer on the craft than they do on the white background. But I'll check that last batch as well, where I have the patterns that are all print. And in this case, it very much depends on the type of print on offer. So on a hot pink, they don't particularly look very yellow, but it is very stark where nothing in the photos is that intense like the hot pink. And on the green, I don't think this is a very natural color choice for this event because there's a lot of blue in the photos, there's a lot of pink and white and craft, there's nothing really to pull me into the green. There are trees in the background, but that's not the focus of my, my page and I just feel like the green is a bit too much competition. But if I look at this paler pink, now I have something that again would work for me. So if I pull all of these together, so just the pink is showing. I don't have that starkness of the white and I don't have the the craft isn't the, the tan of the building isn't bleeding into a craft background. This pink is soft enough that it doesn't compete and it actually picks up some nice pink tones in the photo. So to me I would either use this pink background or one of the craft prints. And in fact with these three photos, I'm going to use a combination of both. But that's my train of thought as I'm choosing, um, choosing the supplies for the images. Here's a quick look at everything I've pulled out to make this page. This which is something new from American Crafts. This is in the new Dear Lizzie Neapolitan and it's called Stitched Ruffle Paper. It comes in two different color combinations and this one is um, pinks and oranges. And you can use the whole sheet just as a 12 by 12 background and make your layout on top of that. I'm going to try cutting it into strips and just using one or two ruffles because I don't particularly want these two colors in the layout but I think this pink would be quite harmonious. 
with the other things I've chosen. So I'm going to cut that up and see how we go. Embellishments. I've pulled out some Miss Caroline label stickers. Last, last week I pulled these out and then didn't use them. We'll see if I actually do use them this time. And the wood veneer pennants from Studio Calico, which I didn't mean to have in my collection that long without opening. I thought I'd use them all and then I found them again. So today I'm going to use them. And the flower die cuts from Farmhouse by October Afternoon, these are a cream print, all October Afternoon and uh, designs are on cream cardstock rather than white. You get a lot of pieces in there, so I haven't even opened that yet, so I'm quite excited to put that to use. And then this is something brand, brand, brand new. Oh, okay, exciting. Exciting if you're a glitter girl. This is called Glitter Ribbon or Glitter Tape, and um, it's the two different names floating about for the same product at the moment. It is sparkly like glitter. It looks like you put a line of tape down and then poured tons and tons of glitter on top of it, but it feels like a ribbon, and look, it's not falling off. The glitter is stuck in that ribbon because it's not actually just glued. It's it's the way the, the fabric is made. I have no good way to explain how this is made. Um, but it's sparkly. It's easy to stick down because you can just run your adhesive on the back of that and stick it wherever you want. Seriously, no mess. Um, and it's. I thought it was going to be really stiff like the backing would be really hard or anything no it feels soft like a ribbon it's lovely the only time you'll get anything coming off is um the end bit where it frays so what i've been using is uh, what i've been doing is whenever i use it i tuck it around and glue that together and then i don't get any glitter coming off at all because that's the only place where it will come loose and that's just because the fibers have been cut so just like something would fray this time it's going to fray but it's sparkly and so just when when you get to the end glue that together and then you won't get any mess at all absolutely zero mess so if you like glitter but you hate the mess this is your product there's lots of different colors i think it comes in two widths I think. Um, there's definitely one, but I think maybe two. And it's called either Glitter Ribbon or Glitter Tape, and it's by American Crafts. Okay, I think that's everything I've pulled out, so I'm going to get started on this page. As I'm working this week, I want to make sure that I include some specific tips for working with these older photos from the 70s, 70s 80s, and 90s. So we're dealing with images taken on film rather than things that are taken digitally. So the big question always comes, am I using originals or am I making a copy and printing a new version? My answer is that the pictures in my scrapbook, if I have the originals, they're the originals. But I make a backup copy. My logic on that is that the originals only take up this amount of space and if I put them in my album then they're done. If I leave them in my photo file they're taking up room there and the digital copy is making another is, is taking up space on the layout so I'm not depleting my my photo file if I'm keeping all of these originals. If you have tons of space and you want to archive all those original prints then by all means do. My space is very, very limited, so if I scrapbook something, it needs to go in the album, not in the photo file. It can't really exist in both places, or I'll just be drowning in images. So what I do is I make a digital copy first, because the digital copy doesn't take up physical space. So I would either scan these, or I would photograph them. I tend to use my camera and make a photograph, and what I do is make sure they're very well lit, put them very flat on the surface and take a photo, especially in natural light or in, in good lighting, however I can get around it. Make sure the camera is square over the top so that you're getting the equivalent of a scan. Or if you have a scanner, you can borrow a scanner, then do a session on the scanner. And then, if something goes wrong with your layout, you don't need to worry because you have a backup copy and you can print those. You can just throw the originals away. Um, that's going to be a little sad, but you'll get over it. I really, really promise. So that's what I do. The photos I'm going to use, I've made a backup copy, but now I'm going to scrapbook with the originals. So that's my system. If you have room to keep all your originals and you want to do that, then by all means do. But my answer is to not have all that extra space because I just don't have it. So now I've started um, cutting my pattern papers. So I'm starting to get an idea of how this is going to come together. I've cut this one to a nine by nine square and then cut a strip of that aqua. This is the branding strip off the bottom here. So it's the, the pebbles bit there. 
And then I'm going to border punch this piece. This is an off cut from my scrap basket, which I believe is jelly bean soup. And I'm going to use a border punch on that. I wanted to just let you know that, because um, several of you have asked, this is basically my favorite border punch. I use it all the time. And of course, then it went out of stock in the shop. It's back in stock now. As of the time I'm making this video, it's there, it's in stock. Now, quite a few people said they were looking for the big scallop, but all they found was the big scallop with the embossed dots. That's what I'm using. You only get the embossed dots if you use light paper and press really, really hard. I've never found a punch that's exactly this shape without the dots. Um, I just don't press so hard that I get the dots. And if I use this on cardstock, I I think my, my wrist would be too sore to, to actually get the dots. It takes a lot of effort. Um, so if I, that was just punching generally. And there are a few places where there, there's just the tiniest little indentation, but once the layout is done, it's not going to show at all. So that's by EK Success. If you're at Two Peas, you can find this in my supply list. If you're watching at YouTube, then you can hop over to Two Peas and find it in the supply list there. So um, yeah, that, that punch, it's by EK Success. That's what it looks like, and it's back in stock now. Okay, end of that little speech. So here's what this paper looks like. So you have one row of crepe paper attached to the background, and then there's just plain underneath. So to cut it into strips is actually really easy because you can just fold the ruffle up and then come in and, and cut um, the ruffle that you want. Now I'm going to actually cut right along the top of that crepe paper because I don't want the white background to show. And I think I'm going to start by cutting two ruffles because I can always go back and make it one ruffle if I want to, but I, it's harder to go back and add a ruffle. I want to add a painted border behind this mat so that there's a little bit of contrast. And for that, I'm just going to use some malted milk cream acrylic paint from the paint dabber. And I need a pencil to mark the placement of that frame. So I'm just going to place this paper where I want it to go. And then I mark off the four corners. And I'm doing this a bit heavy so that you can see it in the video. Really what I, if I was just scrapping um, without the camera on, then I would mark it very, very lightly because I'm only using cream paint, so it is possible for the paint to show through. And then I'll paint a border, just quite messy, and I want to make sure it covers those pencil marks and goes wider so that there'll be a frame behind the pattern paper when I add it on top. So just use a paintbrush. You can use the dabber itself, but I prefer the look of a paintbrush. Once that's dry, then I can just place the pattern paper back over the top and I can, if the pencil marks show through, then I can just use them to line it up or move it ever so slightly and keep in mind that I can always cover them up later if there's anything that isn't quite perfect. I started with these three smaller pieces that I had already cut and they're already attached now. So I've just put them at ever so slight angles, but nothing too dramatic. And then I had the two ruffles and I started looking at this and I think two ruffles is just going to be too much. So I'm going to cut it back down to one ruffle so that I just keep that one at the bottom and then I'll save the other one for later. which means there's not a lot of that aqua that's left on show, but I'm okay with that. I think um, that's probably a good amount, really, even though that wasn't what I was particularly planning on at the very beginning. And then to dress up that top edge, that's where I wanted to add the glitter ribbon. So I'm just going to cut the right length, and I'm adding a little bit so that I can double those ends back. So I'll just show you what I do. Just while that's a fresh cut, run the runner over, run the runner, that's nice, run it over the edge and press it back. 
Same thing on this end. And that prevents the fraying because the fraying in this case is what's going to cause any sort of glitter. Everything else will stay intact. And then I'll just add adhesive right there. And then I can attach that straight to the layout. So that's probably the easiest way I've ever put glitter on my layouts. <laughs> Definitely less messy than normal. Okay, I added the photos first and attached these two flat to the page, just tucked them right just barely along the edge there. This one is actually adhered with foam tape, so it's raised up off the page a little bit. And then the two lettering styles to spell out the title. And then I got started on my writing and I decided I didn't want all the writing on show on this layout. And not that there's not room, there's plenty of space up here. I could add journaling down here and I would always add the writing before I made space for embellishment because that's what's important to me. But when I started writing about this day, I decided there were just certain things that I didn't really want. Um, I didn't want them to be taking away from the photos that was just a little bit of backstory that I would rather somebody only read if they're really interested in reading. So I took three journaling cards from the sets that look like this, um, all different cards. And this particular one is called One and Only Notes Tags. There's eight in the pack and they're various different colors and patterns and some of them have um, some lovey-dovey words and this one has a, a there's this particular middle one has some wording that goes along the side here but I just overlapped them so it wouldn't be so obvious and this one is from another collection this last one isn't from the one and only um, but I'll put it in the supply list I'm not quite sure what it was called off the top of my head and so I want these to go into a pocket essentially on the page but now I've I've kind of messed that up because I didn't plan that in advance so what am I going to do since all these layers are adhered so what I've done is I've pulled this back layer up and this is why I use a repositionable adhesive because I can make decisions like this and then once I'm happy with everything and I it, it will bond and, and nothing falls apart it's all it's all secure so I could put everything back behind here but I have leftover adhesive on those two layers so you wouldn't be able to remove the card without damaging things so what I need is a clean pocket to put them in that doesn't have any adhesive so I've just taken a piece of cardstock, folded it in half, and cut it to fit the cards, both the height that I want them to sit in and the width. And I'll add a little bit of ink to those edges as well, just to keep it in line with the page. You could do this with pattern paper as well, of course. You could do it with an envelope. I actually started with an envelope idea, but I'd made it too wide for the envelope I had that matched. So plan B to make a little pocket. So this, it doesn't matter that I'm going to get adhesive on both sides because it's the inside that will be clean. So I'll add some adhesive to both sides of this so that I can then tuck it behind this layer here. And I'm just going to let a tiny little bit of it show, but not a lot. I wanna make sure that paint can still be seen. And I'll press all that down again. Now that is going to be a little bit more bulky than before, but once it's in the page protector, it'll be fine. And then this piece can go in here and everything will, will be fine. And uh, the journaling will be easy enough to get to out of the top of the page protector, but it will be secure here and it, it won't be on show for everybody. It'll have, it, it's nothing that is overly secret and I don't want people to read. It's just a case of it being a bit more heartfelt story that I would rather somebody really be interested in, not just read as they're flipping through the pages. And I think I'll add a little bit of adhesive on this side to close up this pocket so this lays a little bit more flat. And then I'll add some embellishment up here and I am going to use the stickers this time. I'm really determined to do that. But I did notice that I pulled these and they have quite a bit of white in several of the designs. So I'm gonna take this aqua or turquoise piece because that has less, um, less of the white. And I may just go with that one for now. Perhaps use this all pink one. Let's see how this looks color wise. I think the pinks may be too off. 
might be okay actually, but I think I would add this one with pop dots. To finish this, I wanted to add those wooden little banner pieces and a few of the die cuts from the October afternoon pack. So just wanted to show you that these can be adhered, one they can be adhered to your paper or anything else which is regular adhesive, they're very lightweight. But also wanted to show you that you can, ad you can adhere things right over the top of that glitter ribbon. You can glue things to it which would be a bit more difficult with a true glitter because you'd be gluing to all those separate pieces but as it's, um, it's more a strip of fibers that looks exactly like loose glitter, um, it takes the adhesive and you can, you can glue whatever you'd like to it. So that's really simple. And then I have a few little die cuts that I want to use to fill in these smaller gaps. Yep, and that's everything I'm gonna call that done. So this will pull right through the top of the page protector without any trouble because I'm putting it in a top loading standard um, page protector and then everything else is adhered. I've kept with the idea of using craft and soft tones. There's just a little bit of a splash of a brighter color to pick things up. I used that color that was a good match to the blue but I just used it sparingly in a few different places and tried to keep to things that were either more of a cream tone or a slightly gray tone rather than a really really bright white that would make the slightly warmer photos look um, look too yellow or, or emphasize that. So instead there's just a lot of soft color and the prints are the originals but I have a backup copy so I have everything if I ever need them again and want them um, just as plain images. And with that that'll go into my early years album along with all those other lovely photos from the 70s, 80s and 90s. Of course, your challenge this week is to scrapbook your own photos from the 70s, 80s, or 90s. So give it a go, upload what you um, create, and we'd love to see it. And thanks for watching. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.